he could take a dream and turn it into reality. He came here into this neighborhood with his, his hope was to make huge changes here, to bring people together around food, around gardening. Grow food. Let's, let's grow food. And so it, it started. I came by here and the neighbors were out here. And so I stopped and introduced myself and they told me they were gonna come out, ask me would I come back with them and pray at eight o'clock. And I said, sure, I would come. I came here to be with you. And we're still willing to come out and stand together and say, we just don't want that. You know, Most people own their homes, they have beautiful homes around here. Why would they don't want violence here? <laughs> yeah. And we're going to make a big circle. We're going to rock our arms. We're going to make a big circle. And we're going to make a big circle in this street. We came because even though this has been a tragedy, guy, each and every one of us was connected to Kurt God. And we just wanted to come here today and show our honor to him and the person he was to us. And he offered me a place to stay. He took me in. And no worries, man. You're not going to go. You're not going to go homeless. We worked on so many projects together at the church. People's roofs or built a wall for someone over here. And he was in my yard the other day and I had a plant sitting there and he grabbed the shovel and said, where do you want me to put it? Everywhere he went, he just stepped in and helped people. That's the kind of guy that, that everybody wishes they could be friends with. He just was a giving person. He was the kind of guy that would give you the shirt off his back. So that guy would give you the shirt off of his back. Thank you for his awesomeness and the way he touched people and helped people, God. Helped out where was needed. Well, for Victory Gardens, he did a lot of volunteer work. He served them chicken, because last year his big project was raising over 50 chickens. Real peeps. Hey, peeps. That was kind of his his big his big gesture for Victory Gardens. He was very skilled. He was like a jack of all trades. The Heart House. He's helped with the aquaponics system that they have there. He was a farmer by heart, by trade. Everywhere he went, he planted stuff. Um, last year, he helped us plant over a hundred cherries at our church. Changed the whole landscape. Year before that, he helped me create a whole prayer garden. He must have cut down an acre of buckwheat. He just was sharing whatever skills he could, basically, with any like-minded organization. He just loved the soil, the earth. He was uh, just connected to the earth. These two, three homes are challenging. The only three challenging homes. And when Kurt moved here, a lot of that chaos and stuff went away. And we were so happy. And, you know, we watched out for him. He was, uh, he was tough. So Kurt wasn't only uh, very, very strong, a stupendously willful spirit. I guess he was cool as a cucumber. Said so it's, it's not easy so being what? cheap, well, James. <laughs> so was he cheap? Frugal. Uh, frugal. Very frugal, <laughs> but very generous. <laughs> very frugal, yeah. Frugal and generous. He was also something of a, of a brilliance. Yes. Uh, I was at a five-hour lecture by a Kenyan-born roboticist who's in Berkeley now making digital sensors for aquaponic experiments across the planet. And I have never been so overwhelmed by the brilliance of a man like Eric Ma Undu. I had a hard time understanding what he was saying. But Kurt, I think, has a degree in biology, correct? Yes, a bachelor's. Yeah. And man, did he ever engage this genius from Kenya and Oakland in a conversation that just let my jaw drop at, at this brilliance. So we, we have lost, uh, we have lost somebody very, very special just so knowledgeable. That was one of the things that attracted me to him. He just knew so much about 
gardening, conservation. Everywhere he went, he planted something. He planted something. These are all poppies in the front. These are green beans. Radish. We have watermelon down the way. Peas, onions, garlic. He planted his, himself into our hearts, into our lives, you know, into the fiber of our being. And that's why so many people will miss him so tremendously. Yes. It's my go-to. It's my right hand. I don't have anybody to call anymore. We loved him in those short six months. So I want to thank you for sharing this love with us. And I hope that we can keep this garden in honor of him because no one can grow a garden like that and not have love in their heart. No one can do that. God, even though this just seems like such a horrible tragedy, we just know that something good is going to come out of this guy. There's lots of talks about turning this into a nonprofit, which is really exciting. There's definitely a strong force driving from Alice's Garden, from Walnut Way, from Victory Gardens, from the Heart House, all these like minds. Everyone is kind of scooping in and wondering, like, how can we make this a model? How can we keep it going? These two, three homes are challenging. The only three challenging homes. And when Kurt moved here, a lot of that chaos and stuff went away. And we were so happy. And, you know, we watched out for him. God, we ask that this neighborhood will continue to be transformed into a neighborhood of peace and quiet, God. Exactly the neighborhood that Kurt had imagined that it would be, God. And God, we just, we just want to give you glory. We want to pray for this neighborhood, God. God, don't let any more tragedy happen. It's just too hard on people. He was, uh, he was shot in the back. It wasn't some kind of self-defense thing. It was just a straight-up, cold-blooded murder. I'm at a standstill. People calling me, asking me to be other places, and I have to explain to them again that my best friend was just murdered in some stupid... Stupid gun violence. You know what's going on here in Milwaukee, and, and you hear about it, and then you wake up to it, and it's your friend that hits home. That's, then it becomes real. We just need you to come in and bring peace, bring quiet, God. Chase out for violence, God. Just senseless, senseless, uh, just a senseless loss of a great life. It's so senseless. A waste? Is that is that not a waste? All neighborhoods can heal. And we just asking you to heal this neighborhood, God, from this tragedy. There's a song named We Shall Overcome. Does anybody know that song? Yes, sir. How'd you like to hear some of these? That's a historic 60s song during the freedom and civil rights. I think the meaning here is that we should overcome the violence in our community. Let's sing it all together. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Oh, just would help anybody. Um, I don't think he saw color. I know he never saw color in me and I don't think he ever, I mean our church is predominantly black and he never 
acted any different or and people never treated him any different because of that he just came into an environment and instantly became a part of it i never known kurt to have any in any indifference about color or race or creed or culture or economic status or anything like that he was a very down to earth very down to earth person I'm Kurt's mother and I'm also very grateful for all of you who showed up tonight and for all the kind things, wonderful things you said about my son. I will remember them 